God's grace and peace be with you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to our first hybrid worship service with the New Covenant Fellowship of Austin. This is very exciting, y'all. I can't even tell you how excited I am that we are at this stage where we can gather again. I mean, we've been gathering all along, but gathering in person, but also gathering online. Greetings to all of you on our Zoom. Everybody's waving over here. Greetings to those tuning in on our live stream and watching on YouTube later this week. We are so delighted that we have this opportunity to worship together from all different locations and means of getting here. God is so good. And what a joy it is that we get to be a church family together. So welcome. Thank you for being here. If you have a candle that you're able, if you're at home, if you have one that you are able to light, we're going to light one here on the communion table. And we're going to light this candle as a way of reminding us of Christ's presence. Sometimes it helps to just sort of slow down and pause and remember what it is that we are here to do. So at home, if you're able to light a candle, I invite you to do that with me at this time. And in true hybrid fashion, we have our liturgist zooming in from home. Vi Lee is at home up in Plano, and we get the joy of being led by her in worship today. So I'm going to invite her to lead our call to worship. For those of you who are here in person, you are invited to say the parts in bold. Anytime you see bold up on the screen, you're invited to say that along with me. Vi, will you lead us in our call to worship? Yeah, I'm here. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us pray. Gracious God, source of all healing. In Jesus Christ, you heal the sick and mend the broken. By your spirit, come alongside us and offer your provisions, endurance for those who are weary, comfort those who are isolated, hope for those who fear what the future holds. In you, we find strength to get through each day and as we gather for worship this day, remind us of all the ways you provide. We lift this time to you in holy praise. Amen. Let us now say our mission statement together. The Covenant Fellowship is a racially diverse community. In by the Bible, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and motivated to share God's love with all. In response to God's love, we're called to equip disciples to faithfully serve, to encourage seekers to joyfully commit, and to implore all to worship our Lord as we love our neighbors, grow in grace, and live by faith. And now, please join with Jimmy as he is singing God of Wonders. Oh, 
Now join me for our call to confession. Friends, in Christ, God knows our needs before we ask, and in our asking prepares us to receive the gift of grace. Let us open our lives to God's healing presence, forsaking all that separates us from God and neighbor. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, amen. Now let's take a few moments and lift up our own silent confessions. Amen. Assurance of pardon. 
God did not send the son to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Will you join me for a moment of wonder? I wonder why it's so hard to be patient sometimes. I wonder if farmers have a hard time waiting for their fruits to grow. I wonder how being patient could change the world. I invite you to let I wonder state rest on your word bed and in our air fraction. Come on up. Ben, you can come up. Just in a little while. But there's most to this part. And you can repeat that line after. So there are lots of activities that Abigail set up for our young ones. If you want to go and work on some of those, there's a Fruit of the Spirit coloring page. A hard one and an easy one, Abigail said. So for all ages, anyone is welcome to go partake of our pray ground over here that we have set up. So we are engaging with the fruits of the spirit this summer. We're going to have a six week sermon series where we're going to look at these, this fruit of the spirit that Paul talks about in Galatians. Now this is going to be spread out over the summer. So we're going to have some wonderful guest preachers scheduled throughout, but from between now and August, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this topic. And you may recall that we heard about the fruit of the spirit two weeks ago on Pentecost Sunday, right? We heard that story from Acts with the Holy Spirit coming in dramatic fashion. And then we just sort of jumped over to Galatians and we heard what Paul had to say about what it means to live by the spirit. Heard about the spirit early believers what it means to live by the Spirit. And so going from that Pentecost theme, it seemed fitting to spend a little bit more time with the fruits. Now, when we say the fruit of the Spirit, you're going to notice that it's not plural. Paul doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit, which sometimes we misspeak and call them that. It's not plural. It's singular in the text. There's something significant about that. As we examine the fruit in Paul's letter to the Galatians, we see that there are nine facets of this fruit, that they go together. They can't be parsed out from one another. It isn't as though we can pick and choose which ones we want, like a fruit basket. They all go together. So this summer, we're going to have an extended conversation looking at the fruit of the spirit from those various facets. We're going to take a deeper look at what it means to live by the spirit. And we're going to use this fruit as our guide. So we're going to be skipping over love and joy and peace because we get to hear about those at Advent and other times in the year. We're going to focus on the other six that Paul lists in his letter. 
So we're going to hear Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. I'm going to read that for you now. It's just a short little passage. And then we're going to hear the other scripture passages in just a moment. So let us listen for the word of God. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Y'all, it has been a soggy spring here in Central Texas. I have not looked up the statistics, but it feels to me like it has been raining every single day since New Year's Day. I'm sure that's a little bit of hyperbole, but it has been so wet. One of the effects of all of this rain, at least on my street, is that many dogs don't want to go for a walk. They don't want to take care of business out in the wet grass, and so they've been giving their human companions a bit of a hard time. I've heard several neighbors complain of this frustration that their dogs just won't go out. And I can't say that I really blame these poor pups, though, especially the ones with short legs and bellies that skim across that tall grass. Of course, most of us have not been able to mow in several weeks, and so those wet blades of grass practically come up to their ears. That's got to be irritating. Well, on Thursday night, there was a break in the rain, and several of us took our dogs out to take advantage on our streets. It was late evening, and the clouds parted just enough to let the sun peek through. Maybe you saw this sunset too, if you're here in Austin. It had that gorgeous violet crown draped across the horizon, billowing clouds with hues of pinks and purples. It was breathtaking and a little bit jarring after so many days of gray skies. Well, another neighbor who was also out walking her dog, she stopped in the middle of the road to take it all in. And when my dog Rilla and I passed by her, we stopped for a moment and she turned to me and said, wasn't that worth waiting for? We stood there for a moment, just watching these colors transform before our eyes and then eventually fade away. When we finally broke the silence of that moment, my neighbor said, you know, before the pandemic, I wouldn't have made time to stop and watch a sunset like this. I didn't have enough patience for such a mundane task. Well, by that point, my dog Rilla was losing her patience and wanted to get on our way. So we said goodnight and carried on. I didn't get the chance to ask my neighbor what she meant about that. I was curious, but I would venture to guess that she has experienced a transformation during this pandemic. Maybe it's the dramatic shift in how we do life these days. Many people now working from home, many students doing virtual learning. Those things take a lot of patience. Or maybe it's just navigating this pandemic itself. Remember when we needed those two weeks to flatten the curve and we thought we would be over it? Here we are 15 months later and we are still waiting and hoping for COVID to just go away. Now I'm feeling encouraged by the numbers, at least here in Central Texas, with case numbers and hospitalizations going down and vaccinations going up. But we know that we're not out of the woods yet. We can't just pretend like it's all behind us. During all of this time, we have had to be patient. Patient with one another as we try to figure out how to respond to all of this, what is safe and what is not. 
it's hard when we've got different messages coming from public health officials and elected leaders. It's hard to know what is the right way. We've had to be patient with schools and our workplaces and our church as we're all trying to do the best we can to do what's safe and do what is right. We've sort of been forced to learn patience during all these months. And as we approach life on the other side of COVID, we are going to need that patience with each other even more. If you think about it, we have been in survival mode for the past 15 months. It's possible that some of us have experienced more than one existential crisis, maybe two during this time. We're in a fragile place with our mental health and the stability of our community. Patience is going to be key. This next season is going to call for a deeper patience, though, more than just waiting for that sourdough starter to work its magic or waiting for that next Marvel episode to start streaming, or waiting for that pandemic puppy to actually go out on that wet grass. What we need in this next season is a deeper abiding patience. Patience that comes as part of that whole package of the fruits of the spirit, the kind that Paul talks about in his letter to the Galatians. This is a patience <clears throat> that is rooted in love and joy and peace. It is a patience that is boosted by kindness and generosity and self-control. It is a steadfast patience that is willing to go the long haul with each other, vowing to stay in community and relationship even when it is so hard. Patience is going to be needed for each other as we emerge from this pandemic with varying levels of ready to get back out there, varying levels of stability with mental health, varying levels of grief from all that this pandemic has taken. We are going to need patience for each other and patience with ourselves as we are in a tender place doing the best that we can. Deep abiding patience. We see time and time again examples of this kind of patience throughout the Bible. We see it with Abram and Sarai as they await the birth of their child. We see it with Joseph as he awaits reconciliation with his brothers. We see it with Ruth as she awaits settlement in a safe land. As a very novice gardener, I love that scripture repeatedly uses farming and vineyards to illustrate a point because this imagery speaks of how long it takes to bear good fruit. This is a good reminder as we ponder patience today. Think about the parable of the sower for just a moment. The one where the sower is spreading seeds and some of them fall on the path, some of them fall on rocky ground, some of them fall among the thorns, but some of them fall on that good soil. And the sower had to wait patiently. That seed needed time. There was nothing that the sower could do to rush that along. The sower just had to let that seed grow and produce a hundredfold. Jesus often teaches about how the work of the gospel, it takes time, a lot of time which can be hard for us to grasp with all of our modern conveniences. We've got a microwave to quickly heat our food. We've got high-speed internet. We're not as good at waiting anymore. But 
But this teaching is an important reminder that we are called to be patient, to abide with one another and allow that good fruit to emerge. I'm going to close with that passage from 1 Thessalonians, which illustrates what this deep abiding patience looks like when it is lived out. Paul was writing to the church in Thessalonica, and the people in this church, they were getting impatient. They were waiting for Christ's return, thinking that he was going to come back any day now. And they were having a hard time with that waiting, but also paying attention to what was going on around them, how to care for the needs of others in the meantime. Paul's encouragement in his letter is to center themselves in that future hope while also focusing on the needs around them. This feels rather poignant in this season as we are looking toward what is to come, but realizing there is work to do here and now. So let us hear Paul's words from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 18. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. During this season, we have been using the Apostles' Creed to affirm our faith. And today, we're going to be able to lift our voices together a little more easily. So again, Vi is going to lead the first part of each line. And then those of us who are here in person, we're going to say the part in bold together. And for all of our folks on Zoom and Facebook and YouTube, you can say the whole thing if you want. You can say just parts. We just ask that you stay muted so that we can hear Vi clearly. Vi, will you lead us? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now we will we'll be bringing forward our offerings of gifts. Our tithes and offerings allow New Covenant Fellowship to continue its ministry in Austin and allow the good news of the gospel to spread beyond our land by the grace of God. We invite you to send your offerings in the mail to our church 
or you may donate online through our website. For those who are worshiping in person today, there's a basket by the welcome station where you can leave your offering after worship. Thank you for supporting our church and ensuring our ministry continues to thrive. We are truly grateful for the faithful stewardship of this community. And now let us sing the doxology as we dedicate our offering. <sighs> Friends, we have the great joy of offering a blessing and a commissioning to our two graduates. We heard from them last week. But we wanted to wait until this week when we could do part of this in person and offer a blessing, a prayer, and also a commissioning. So I'm going to invite Danita. Come on up here. And Crystal is at home. If it's possible to spotlight her as well. Then we can all see her here. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> all right, I don't see on the screen. Do we have Crystal on there? Okay, all right. We will we'll extend our blessing to her. We have a gift for both of you. We've got cards that are being passed around. So we'll get that to you at the end. Um, we are just, I don't know about y'all, my heart is so full as I think about these two, about Danita graduating from seminary after going through many challenges and hurdles and doing school during COVID. I think everybody earns a medal for that. <laughs> that is not easy. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited. If y'all haven't heard, we have officially called Danita as our Director of Spiritual Formation. So she is officially on staff with us, and we're so thrilled that all of the gifts that she's been offering us this past several years, she gets to do it in a more official capacity, and that is exciting. We are thrilled for you as your ministry continues. And then we have Crystal, who just graduated from Connolly this past week. Uh, so, so thrilled for her. She is one who really has grown up in this church. I don't remember how old she was. Do you, Nikki, when she first? I don't, but she was little. She was itty bitty. She was, I think, close to their age. Um, Crystal, if you have the chance to watch this, we are so incredibly proud of you. It has been a joy to watch you grow and thrive and learn in your faith. And we're excited to see you head off to Rice in the fall and all the adventures that await you there and your studies. We are certainly holding you in prayer. So I'm going to offer a prayer that I'm going to extend to both of you, uh, both of our graduates, and we will do a dual blessing and commission. Let us pray. Oh, and if you want to extend hands, during any part of this, that is our tradition at New Covenant to lift up those hands. So all of, the, all of those Zooming at home, feel free to do that as well um, as we offer this blessing and prayer to Danita and Crystal. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. With the psalmist, we stand in awe and humility, O oh God, our creator, of the good gifts that you have given us in these graduates, in Crystal and in Danita. You have instilled in them an insatiable curiosity about your world, your people, and your earth. This curiosity, this thirst for truth has led them here to this place. 
And we are so grateful for the privileged years of friendship, of diligence and struggle, of new insights and discovery. And now as they go from here into this next season, we ask that you would graciously continue to fill them with a deep and abiding knowledge of your love for them. And we ask that by your spirit, they may tend to the world and help set it right once again. Give them open hearts to feel its pain and courage enough not to be overwhelmed by its suffering. May they taste the joy of seeing your kingdom come in every corner of this planet. And we ask that by your spirit, they would add to the beauty in your world. Fuel them with an imagination as artisans of word, song, and deed that comes to terms with both the wounds of the world and the promise of the resurrection. We ask that by your spirit, they may be nourished and renewed by hope, the good news that God is God and Jesus is Lord, and that the powers of evil have been defeated, and that God's new world has begun. May mercy, beauty, and hope be theirs in this world for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we speak this blessing unto them. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look kindly upon you and give you peace. Amen. So this is, this is part of the gift when we get the card signed. We'll get you the other part, but this is a, an ornament from the church. And I've got one for Crystal as well that she can take off to her dorm. Uh, we're so proud of you. We're so grateful for you. Congratulations. Do you want to say that in the mic? The Zoomers can hear you. What I was saying to Becca is that I could not have done this without the support of New Covenant Fellowship of Austin. So grateful to be part of this family of faith. <laughs> Amen. So Danita is going to help me lead communion in just a moment. So you can stay up here. You can go sit down once we're ready. It's up to you. We're going to move into our time of the table, which feels so appropriate after having offered this blessing, after recognizing the gifts within our community. We approach this table that was set by our Lord. It is a table of love and grace and mercy. And we remember that this table does not belong to us. This is the Lord's table. And the Lord sets it that all who want to come and taste and see are welcome to partake. So for those who are at home, we invite you to grab something to eat and something to drink. Anything you have on hand is going to work just fine. We are trusting that the Holy Spirit can work in mighty ways to bring the real presence of Christ to you. So during the time when we bless the elements, feel free to hold your elements up. And we will be sure to extend that blessing to what you have on hand at home. And for those of us who are here, we have communion and communion available by ordinance. So we've got chunks of bread that we have pre-prepared for you. And we've got the individual cup that we will partake with. Uh, and we will celebrate this meal together in person for the first time in many, many months. Um, with very full hearts. So before we approach the table, let us pray. Gracious God, you spoke your love into this world and you called it good. And you created us in your image with the hopes of being in relationship with us until the end of time. But we fell away from you and we fell into sin. 
You sent prophet after prophet trying to call us back. And it wasn't until in the fullness of time you sent your son, Jesus Christ, who would embody the mercy and redemption that we would need to come back to you. We give thanks for this abundant and mighty gift. Gracious God, send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Unite us with all of the saints in every time and every place that we may fellowship together as one in the spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. On the night that our Lord Jesus was arrested, he was at supper with his disciples. And he took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, he took a cup. And as he poured it out, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the saving power of our risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So for those of you at home, I invite you to serve yourselves and each other. Those of you who are here, you're welcome to come up to the table and partake of the meal. We're going to serve Jimmy first real quick. And then you're invited to join as he leads us in Thanks, come and all praise to Christ. 
Christ Jesus, his only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Friends, if you are new to this life of faith, if you're curious what this is all about, or if you have lived a life of faith for a while and are just in need of prayer or encouragement, we invite you to reach out. You can contact us through our website or our social media pages, and I and any of our elders would be delighted to talk with you and pray for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, at this table, you have nourished us in abundance, and we give thanks for this encounter with your grace and your love, and we pray that you would send us forth transformed and ready to share that grace and love with all people. In Christ's name we pray, amen. We have a few announcements to share with y'all, things going on in the life of our church. The first is our Fruit of the Spirit All Ages VBS. This is going to be kind of an extended VBS. We're going to have some at-home activities. And on July 25th, we're going to gather for our Compassion Cafe, and our students are going to lead us in an interactive worship service where we're going to weave this VBS all into one it's going to be a really cool and creative service. I hope you can be a part of that. We will be sending out more information about um, the extended part of it and the take home part of it as well. And then we're going to be having a virtual VBS uh, Presbyterian Children Homes and Services asked if we would be able to provide that for some of their families. And since we did this last year, we figured we had some practice with it. Um, so we're going to do that July 19th through 23rd, um, and this is going to be all virtual. We're going to have our Compassion Camp again this year, uh, and we're going to learn and grow together uh, and experience God's love through that experience. So we hope you can join us for that. And then finally, I don't think I made a slide for it, but we do have Compassionate Curiosity after worship today. We'll take probably a 15-minute break after prayer and praise so that we can reset the space. Um, and then we will gather for conversation. We're going to watch a short video, and we're just going to talk about the state of things here in the Austin area and the communities that we live in. So if you'd like to stay tuned for that, those of you who are on the Zoom, just stay logged in. You don't have to go anywhere, uh, and you can join us for that conversation. I think that's it for announcements. So here are charge and benediction. Friends, during this season, let us pursue that deep, abiding patience as we abide with one another, emerging from this pandemic, looking toward what is ahead. Let us do so with patience. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. So, for those of you who are here on Zoom, we invite you to turn your video on if you're willing and unmute yourselves. And we're going to put it on gallery mode on the screen so that the folks here can pass the piece to you. And everybody here, you can get up and move around. We just ask that you respect people's uh, space so that we're not getting too close. Uh, but we're going to pass the peace to one another by saying those words. May the peace of Christ be with you. And, and also with you. with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Peace of Christ, everybody. Peace, peace of Christ. Christ. Peace Christ. Christ. Peace, Robert. Peace, Robert. Peace of Christ, we're with you. Hi, peace of Christ. Jeff, I think you're over somewhere, peace of Christ. I see you.
Yeah, <laughs> 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 